Welcome back everybody, my name is Brendan Dickinson and today we're going to be talking about the Unity Hub. What is it and how do we use it? Well back in the day, you used to just download and install whatever version of Unity you wanted. But Unity had a lot of updates and patches and you could get into a situation where you had 10 plus versions of Unity installed on your computer at the same time and dozens of different projects that all used different versions of Unity. As you can imagine, this got pretty cumbersome. And that's where Unity Hub comes in. Unity Hub is a standalone application that allows you to manage all your projects and all the different versions of Unity that those projects use. If you don't have Unity Hub yet, Go check out my how to install Unity video. It'll help you get Unity Hub installed. And with that out of the way, let's jump right in. All right, so here we have Unity Hub. You can tell that this is Unity Hub 3.0 beta 7. This might not be beta, you know, this will update over time as well. But in general, it should be very similar. So the first thing that I want to take a look at is this little avatar in the top left corner. If you click on sign in or create account, it's actually going to open up a web page on Unity's website where you'll be able to sign in with your Unity ID or create a new Unity ID. And then that will log you into the Unity Hub as well in here. Also, there's a place to manage your license. So if you are on personal, it will have your personal license. If you're on pro, it'll have your pro license. And if you want, you can return your license through here. You will have to sign in in order to manage your licenses in here. There's also this send feedback link, which opens up a link to Unity Hub Roadmap. Now this could be a little confusing because you're like, I want to send feedback. I don't want to look at the roadmap. But if you scroll down, there are helpful links here. Uh, if you have a new idea for the Unity Hub, then you can submit this idea. You'll have to, you know, fill out this form and submit it using your email address. Also, if you have any questions about the Unity Hub, you can click on this box and then click this forum link. And this will take you to the Unity Hub forums on the Unity website where you can ask questions, get things answered, see if there's bugs, all of that kind of stuff. Also, while I'm on this roadmap, let me just explain what this is because this actually is a great way to see where the Unity Hub is, what new features are coming up, and what they're considering adding to the Unity Hub. You can see in this in progress box that we have star project. So the ability to, you know, star projects so that they're a little bit more obvious, the ability to rename a project, and there's a little bit about Apple, Intel, and Silicon versions of working side by side. What they're planning to do is pause and resume downloads inside of the hub, be able to access the project and asset library from within the hub, and also have custom templates. At the bottom, under consideration, we can see that they have a home screen that they're considering doing, they have a garbage mode that they're considering doing, and project thumbnails. So those would be pretty cool, but don't expect those to be in the Unity Hub anytime soon. All right, now back to the Unity Hub. Now under troubleshooting, we have the release notes, documentation, log folder, and reporting a bug. If you click on the release notes or documentation, this is gonna take you to the release notes for the latest version of Unity Hub or the version that you're on, I believe. If you click on the documentation button, it's gonna take you to this page. This page is a fantastic resource for Unity Hub stuff. It's basically this video, but text, and it even has a little bit more information than this video in it. I've got this link in the description below, so check that out if you'd rather have a text version of this video. And going back to the hub again, if we open the log folder, this is so that you can see the logs for the hub. This is probably not important for a lot of people, but if you're having issues, if you're having bugs with the hub and you're submitting stuff and working with Unity, they may ask for your log file and this is where you'll find it. And last but not least, report a bug. Now, if you click on this, it's going to open up another little window. You can put in your address, what issue you encountered. I would say before you do this, please search the forums to see if that bug is a popular bug, if they already know about it. If they don't, if you think it's a bug that you've just found that's kind of uncommon, go ahead and submit it through this and try to be as descriptive as possible. The next thing that I want to show is the preferences, which is this cog up in the top left. If you click on this, then you'll see a bunch of different tabs over here, and I'll go through these one at a time. So projects, pretty simple. It just shows you the default location of new projects that are created within the hub. Installs, very similar, but it's the location of your Unity editor installs. And the downloads, if you download some projects off of the Unity Learn tab, or if you download Unity editors for installation, this is where they're going to be. Next is appearance, where you can 
decide whether you want the hub to hide in Windows system tray when the editor opens. Uh, I don't usually have this checked, but if you want, you can have that checked. And also the display language for Unity Hub. There are several languages here that you can choose from. I just use English. Next is licenses, which we're able to get to. We've seen this before. This is where you manage your licenses. You can click add to add a license and activate with a serial number or license requests or just get your free version. Um, you can get a plan for your team if you're working with a team and you can get a student license if you are a student. And the last tab in the preferences is channels. And this just lets you choose between the beta version of the Unity Hub and the production version. You do have to have the latest production version installed in order to do this. If I just clicked on this and exited it out, you can see that Unity Hub V2.45 is now available and will install after restarting. So if I restart it, it will install the latest production version, but I don't really care. I'm okay with using the beta version, so that's what I'm gonna go with. And then we can start looking at these side tabs. The tab that we're on now, projects, really helps you just look at all the different projects you have and manage them. If you want to open a project, you can add a project from the disk or a remote project. You can also create a new project, which is what we did in the installation video. And this is the project that we created. And we can see where this project is, what the name is, when it was last modified. We can also see the editor version, and then there are these three dots. First, I'm gonna take a look at this editor version. If we click on this, we can choose different editor versions. Currently, I only have this version installed. If I wanted to use a later version that I had installed, I could click on that and open it with the new version, and it would upgrade my project to that version of Unity. Also by default, it just uses the current platform that you're on. It assumes that this project is going to be built for Windows right now. I can add a platform if I want to build for Android, iOS, any of these other things. I can then click them and install them and they will be available in this platform section here. Also, if you want to install a new version of the editor, you can click on this button and it will take you to a, an easy place to install new versions. The last thing in our projects tab is this little three dots here. And this little three dots will allow you to see the project in your explorer. So if we click on that, we can actually see our first project here. We can also add command line arguments. This is probably not gonna be something that you do until you're like a year or two down the line in Unity at least. I've done this a few times for very specific things, but uh, it's not very common. You can also choose to remove this project from your list if you don't wanna see it in Unity Hub anymore. On to the next tab, Installs. This is very similar to the Projects panel, but instead we're dealing with the Unity Editor Installs. So you can see we only have one version of the Unity Editor installed. We can actually go over to this cog and add modules, and this is exactly the same as the Supported Platforms page. We can just add those here as well. We can also show this in the Explorer, which allows us to see where the Unity Editor is installed. And we can uninstall Unity Editor versions from here as well. This installs pages allows you to locate an editor that's already on the computer, and it allows you to install editors as well. And it is broken up into official releases and pre-releases if you want to filter them. So obviously the one that we have here is a LTS official release. We could also do a pre-release, and if we go here and install the editor, you can see that there is a beta version of 2022, which we can install, and that would be under pre-releases. That's about it for the installs page. Now we can move on to learn. This tab is pretty much what you'd expect. It holds a bunch of resources for learning Unity. So let's say you wanted to go through this tutorial. You could click on it and view it on Unity Learn, and this is the page that it would bring you to. And this has a step-by-step -step process tutorial for learning the stuff that you want. There are some of these that are also able to be downloaded directly into the hub and then used using a version of Unity, say 2020.3. You can also see this on the website, similar to the other ones, or you can just directly download it yourself, which doesn't take too long. And then you can open it using this version of Unity. There are several resources here and they're quite interesting. You can also see things in the recommended tab if you are signed in, and we can see what things we have downloaded as well. Next is the community tab. The community tab is a collection of links that bring you to different places that are going to help you out as a creator. First, we have the Unity blog, which is for news and updates and stuff like that. And this is what that blog page looks like. So you can get news, technology, community, a bunch of stuff that just Unity does a bunch of articles on. 
Unity Answers is a great place for people that are having issues with their project, whether it's a bug or you're having an issue with the editor. It's most likely that many other people have had that issue and that the answer to your question is on this forum. And this is what Unity Answers looks like. And you can just search for whatever your problem that you're having is. So you are having a null reference, you could just type that in and then see what people are saying in the answers. This works very similarly to Stack Overflow, where somebody posts a question and then other people post answers and those answers are voted on. So you can see what was the most helpful answer. Next, we have the forums, which will bring you to this page. And the forums have just about anything that you could think of to discuss around Unity. One of the pages that I find very useful in here is the commercial job seeking and commercial job offering. If you are looking for a Unity job or if you're looking for people to help you work on Unity stuff, this would be a good place to check it out. Next is Unity Live Help, where you can go and you can request a one-on-one -on -one session with a Unity expert. Then there's Unity Play, where you can go and post your WebGL builds and get feedback from players and other creators, and also just participate in monthly showcases. Last on this page is Unity Pulse, which is a place for the community to give feedback directly to Unity. If you want to join that community, then you can give feedback directly to them and possibly influence where Unity goes in the future. And with that, we're almost finished. There is this downloads page, which just says, what am I actively downloading and what have I recently downloaded in the Unity Hub? You can see that we downloaded this one creator kit from the Unity Learn tab. And at the very bottom, it says switch channel. And if we click on that, you can see it opens up the preferences again takes us to advanced and we're able to look at the channels if we want to switch this to production instead of beta again. And that's just about everything there is to know about the Unity Hub right now. It could change in the future, they could add a bunch of stuff, you saw the roadmap. So if things are updated, I'll probably make future videos about the different changes that they have. But I hope I helped you understand a little bit more about Unity Hub. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'd be happy to answer them. Have fun creating, and I'll see you next time.